Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. We continue our coverage of the sport of wrestling. We go out to Colorado Springs, Colorado for our Nike Hot Seat interview. Today, a very special one. It was uh, announced that there would be five finalists for the cover of a very special collector's edition of Men's Health Magazine, and one of our own has made it to the cover, and we're proud to welcome to the show Adam Wheeler. Adam, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Congratulations, dude. I mean, that's pretty i mean this is one of the premier men's health magazines in the entire world and you're on the cover yeah thank you it's a it's definitely an honor to be part of a magazine that you know i started getting when i was in high school to learn how to work out and now i'm part of it i'm in the magazine and like you said i'm on the cover which it's just an honor for me to to have that uh, opportunity not just great pictures but it is imparting great knowledge on how to work out how to eat, how to be living a healthy lifestyle. And at six foot three, 240 pounds, you've been doing that for a while. You started late in the sport of wrestling. You started in high school. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Um, you know, I was actually up until that point, I was a baseball player, you know, played all the, all the other kids' sports, but, you know, primarily baseball. Um, never wrestled before, never even knew what wrestling actually was. Saw a flyer at my high school um, and decided, you know, I'm going to go try out for wrestling. And, um, you know, it was it was funny because at the time I was a real chubby kid, out of shape. And um, I remember my mom just thinking, you know, as soon as he sees what he has to wear, he's not going to stick to it. But um, I went in there and uh, wasn't very good at all. I lost every match my freshman year except for one. And uh, for some reason I still had the desire to – to make that my primary sport and stick to it, um, even though I wasn't any good at it at that point. Was it coaching that, that encouraged you? Was it just the, the, the real challenge that the sport presented, or what was it? Um, first and foremost, it was definitely um, a coach that I had. His name is John Eisel. Um, definitely give him credit for not only for me sticking with wrestling, um, but just kind of you know, for who I am today, he, he helped me become that person. And that was, um, definitely a huge impact for me. Um, a guy that, if you know my story, definitely stepped into my life early on and became kind of a father figure for me. And, um, yeah, so that, that's definitely a huge part of it. And then something about me, um, in addition to that, I think it was just a perfect combination because, I'm the type of guy that I love the challenge. I still, to this point, I love challenging myself, and um, I wasn't any good at something. So, you know, having that desire to to push myself and to continue and eventually become, you know, a good high school wrestler, and then obviously into the Olympics and stuff like that. But it's just part of who I am to to seek out the challenges, I guess. Knowing you as long as I have, I just can't imagine you not being good at anything. What you put your heart to, you seem to want to do well that uh, obviously there was a choice you made at some point between freestyle and, and, and greco how did you end up with the decision you made because it's not necessarily an obvious road yeah you know i out of high school i joined the coast guard and luckily enough i was able to try out for the navy wrestling team um through through the military programs in the coast guard and um I just fell into the hands of a really good coach right out of high school, Rob Herman. Um, when I was 18 years old, I was probably one of the youngest guys. You know, there's a lot of young military guys, but 18 years old, fell into the hands of a, a Greco Olympic coach and um, phenomenal coach in Greco. And I thought I was going to be a freestyle wrestler for the longest time. And, you know, I just kept excelling and at Greco and, and getting better at Greco. And the longer I stuck with Greco, I really began to love Greco. And, um, you know, around 2003, after my fourth year with Rob Herman on the, the Navy team, uh, I got offered a scholarship to go to that Northern Michigan program with Yvonne. And at that point, I kind of knew that, you know, Greco was going to be my path if I was going to make the Olympics. You're talking about Yvonne, Yvonne Ivanov. Uh, of course, you know, I. I don't know if he invented it, but surely he's perfected the Bulgarian bag in so many ways. Uh, oh, do yeah. you still work out with that every day? Um, I definitely work out with it a lot. Not every day. Um, 
I'm getting a little older now, so I need a little bit of rest <laughs> here and there. But <laughs> but it's definitely it's in the gym that I train at, yeah. and um, I introduce it to other people still. And I still have the you know one of the very first models that he made that um, he gave me as a gift when I was in college, and um, you know I've it's always something that I use. I feel like it's a a great tool, especially for wrestling, and I'll probably never stop using it. It's one of those tools that is so, you know, it depends on how you use the tool. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think you're probably seeing that in law enforcement as well, right? I mean, uh, a, a weapon is only a weapon when you make it into a weapon, correct? Correct, yeah. yeah. So let's talk a bit about uh, the Today Show. I mean, when, mm -hmm. when you went to New York uh, to become one of the five finalists for the men's health issue, the, the special ultimate issue, the special collector's edition of Men's Health. Um, it was a, it was a neat experience, but you knew at that point that you know the weight of wrestling literally was on your shoulders yet again, just like it was at the 2008 Games in Beijing, uh, where at 96 kilos you excelled and won a bronze medal. Did you feel a special relationship or even a responsibility, for that matter? that you were going out to represent the sport. Um, absolutely. I think, you know, um, just being out there, I was, it was, you know, it was for wrestling, but it was also for um, my, my current job now as a police officer um, with the media, you know how it is now. There's a lot of negative media for the police, and I wanted to shed some positive um outlook I guess on on the police also definitely for wrestling I'm always um, representing wrestling now the reason I was probably selected is because of the Olympic medal um, things like that in combination I guess with doing something good for the community and um, you know I feel like I try to represent both to the best of my ability um, and just you know be that person I guess that that's um, motivating and inspiring others to do better and no matter what it is they're doing in your life have you found it to be true i mean i have but perhaps <laughs> as a competitor you were never a member of the u.s world team you went to the beijing olympics as a long shot you finished third you still accomplished goals and i know that Titan mercury wrestling club andy barth uh, wayne boyd uh, johnny rugan all these guys so look up to what you've accomplished um and, and and maybe olympic gold was your goal at the time but dude you still accomplished so much do you feel that yeah absolutely and you know i of course you go to the olympics and you want to win um and at that time i i felt like i could win and i still look back and say if i would have just not made this mistake you know and lost um, a close match in the semifinals. I still think that potentially I could have won, but I definitely also, you know, it was it was a huge honor for me to be on the podium at the Olympics, and and I definitely um, set my goals high. But my my ultimate goal was I wanted to be an Olympian, and then that medal was kind of like that cherry on top of the ice cream. You know, it was uh, it was unreal to me. Be honest, how much ice cream do you really eat? Uh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I eat I eat ice cream, but I you know I don't do it every day. I right. guess I can say that you got to have some. Uh, you can't hold yourself to that strict line, especially now. I'm not really an Olympic athlete anymore or anything like that. But I definitely try to live a healthy lifestyle. Look at some of the guys that are still training, still competing. Andy Bisick comes to mind. Mm -hmm. uh, the the power behind the mustache, perhaps. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? It's. The yeah. smile's there, but the intensity is phenomenal. Yeah. He's he's one of those guys, I, you know, I went to college with Andy, and I was, I started college a little bit older than, than those guys, and, you know, Andy was a young kid, and I, I could just see he was one of those kids that, and I say kid, he's not really that much younger than me, but, you know, a few years at that time when I'm 23, 24, and he's 18 years old, um, there's a big difference there in age, and just the maturity of of who you are at that point and I just he was just you know kind of a quiet kid everybody liked him got along with him he did what he was told did you know did the extra stuff worked hard and you know it's for me to see him doing what he's doing right now um, even though I'm kind of you know 
a little bit away from wrestling. I don't get in there as much as I should um, because of my job and all that stuff. But, you know, just, I still follow him and I still follow the other guys that were on my team, Robbie Smith, Spencer, Mango, Harry Lester, all those guys that um, I wrestled with and and see now just doing great things. It's it's really cool to see. Robbie used to be in your wake. I mean, in many ways, you're an older brother, that, you know, to these guys, uh, both in the way you live your life, the way you competed, the way you trained. Do you feel that? You know, I remember Robbie, and I don't know if he would remember it just like this, but um, I remember when he was still in high school and him and his dad came up and talked to me about the program at Marquette at a tournament, and, you know, we were telling him, yeah, we'd love to have you come up. Um, I saw him as another training partner, um, and he was just, you know, young kid, ended up coming up to Marquette for a little bit training with me and um, R.C. Johnson and Justin Millard and some of those other guys. And um, he was just one of those kids who was very, very talented, um, kind of deceiving. You know, he doesn't look like he's like a super muscular heavyweight or anything like that. But I remember wrestling him. You know, I probably wrestled him five to eight times in our career. And every time... um, he kept getting a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And, um, you know, it came down, I actually had to wrestle him in the semifinals of the Olympic trials for the mini tournament. And, um, it was a very close match. And after the match, I kind of, you know, was thankful that that was the last time I wrestled him because (laughs) that was around the time he was starting to really catch up to me. And, and, um, you know, it was, ended up working out for me that year but you know now it's his time and he's doing great things and he's placed twice in the world now top five and man i really i really pull for him to to bring home in a medal um next year and i or yeah next year and you, you know i'm very confident that he can um he's is just there got- psychology robbie loves to believe in the striped socks and <laughs> if you follow the, if you follow the socks down there's a whole lot of red white and blue in there yeah, I don't know when he started doing that, but <laughs> he's always been a little bit more outgoing. Um, you know, Robbie Smith was actually at my wedding, and, um, you know, I was the guy at the training center. I invited everybody to my wedding. I had guys, Justin Ruiz, Robbie, R.C. Johnson, Justin Millard. I believe all those guys were my weight class at the Olympic trials. They were all at my wedding, you know, so it just kind of shows the uh, the small world of wrestling. Um, but... Robbie's always been very outgoing and you know it works for him he's he's a very likable person and um you know it's maybe it is his new his new thing but it's working for him so I don't know maybe for the Olympics add one more stripe on the socks and you'll you'll bring home <laughs> one of those medals <laughs> you mentioned a lot of big guys that's a whole lot of uh, big suits and tight collars at your yeah. wedding right <laughs> oh yeah oh, yeah it was a good time though our guest, uh, courtesy of Titan Mercury Wrestling Club, follow him online at tmwc1.com or on Facebook and Twitter at Titan underscore Mercury. Adam Wheeler has made the cover of a very important uh, magazine. Important because they've been telling the truth for a long time about how to correctly live your life, not to build big muscles, but to be a very healthy athlete. And if you can be a healthy athlete, perhaps you can follow in his footsteps and and in this case, he's become a uh, law enforcement officer specializing in SWAT. Colorado Springs is where he calls home, but you'll see him on the cover of the magazine Men's Health and proudly doing so, representing the sport of wrestling. It's been eight years since you've been on the mat or more. And uh, do you miss it? Um, I, I kind of found a an outlet for myself, <laughs> and that is uh, doing the jujitsu that we talked about. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I started doing that immediately afterwards. And I, you know, with my job and everything, I can't train obviously twice a day like I used to for the Olympics. But I get in there enough to where I can still um, train and feel like I get the benefit of it physically, but I'm not overtraining myself. And um, something else that I, I've really grown to love. And uh, so, yes, I miss it. And I miss that very high competitive level of wrestling that I was at, you know, the highest level training with the the best guys in the world every day. Um, But I kind of found an outlet that, that helps me with that. Well, he's one of the best in my book because of the way he lives his life and what he represents. 
It, you know, you've done an incredible job, Adam. I've li literally been a fan for a good number of years, and I don't always get a chance to talk to the guys I admire the most because you guys are so busy doing what you do. But uh, it's absolutely been a joy following this story uh, and now getting a chance to, to talk to you. I can't wait to see what's up next. I know we've got a big announcement coming at, up in January we can't talk about, but I guarantee you, come the end of December first part of January, we will be talking about it. Absolutely. I'm so excited for you, uh, your family. i got to believe your wife has been so supportive. You couldn't do it without Marley and, and Jameson and McAllen. And is there a, there's a new baby, right? Uh, no. Um, so is, it's is James. Is there Is there only two? Is it Jameson and McAllen? Is that it? Yeah, but I also um, right now have guardianship of my teenage sister. She's 17. And so she lives here too. And we're, um, you know, we're her guardians right now, and That's she's cool. doing very well also. So, At 34 years old, continuing to live the good life and being a positive example for even us guys at 55. Well, thank you. Dude, I appreciate I, that. If, <laughs> you know what? This sounds, uh, sounds a little uh, hopeful, but I would like to live my life a little closer to the way you live yours, and I love it. Thank you so much for representing the sport as well as you have. Congratulations on the, the tremendous honor uh, that you bestowed on the sport and being on the cover of a major magazine like this puts wrestling in a completely different light. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. appreciate you having me on. You bet. For all of us at Takedown Media, Nike Hot Seat today has been uh, populated by a very good guy. Adam Wheeler has been our guest. Again, thanks to our friends at Tight Mercury Wrestling Club in San Marino, California. All of us at Takedown and, of course, our global wrestling media. We couldn't do it without you guys. Thanks for watching, and we appreciate our guest, Adam Wheeler. Thanks, Adam. Thank you.